all of us, corporations, the federal government, and individuals out there who may be living beyond Time's their means. Up. Senator. Well, thank you, Bob. I just want to get back to this home ownership. Uh, during the Depression era, we had a thing called the Home Ownership uh, Loan Corporation. And they went out and bought up these mortgages, and people were able to stay in their homes. And eventually, the values of those homes went up, and they actually made money. And by the way, this was a proposal made by Senator Clinton not too long ago. Uh, so obviously, if we can start increasing home values, then there will be creation of wealth. But what but, the question was, okay. what are, are you going energy, to cut? I, Well, first, second of all, energy independent. We have to have nuclear power. We have to stop sending $700 billion a year to countries that don't like us very much. It's wind, tide, solar, natural gas, nuclear, offshore drilling, which Senator Obama has opposed. And the point is that we become energy independent, and we will create millions of jobs millions of jobs in America. Okay, what, what would I cut? I would have, first of all, across the board spending freeze, okay? That some people say that's a hatchet. That's a hatchet, and then I would get out a scalpel, okay? Because we've got, we have presided over the largest increase. We've got to have new direction for this country. We have presided over the largest increase in government since the great society. A government spending has gone completely out of control. $10 trillion debt were given to our kids, uh, a half a trillion dollars we owe China. I know how to save billions of dollars in defense spending. I know how to eliminate programs. Which I have ones? fought against, well, uh, one of them would be the marketing assistance program. Another one would be uh, a, a number of uh, subsidies for ethanol. I oppose su subsidies for ethanol because I thought it distorted the market and created inflation. Senator Obama supported those subsidies. I would eliminate the tariff on imported uh, uh, sugarcane-based ethanol uh, from Brazil. I know how to save billions. I saved the taxpayer $6.8 billion by fighting a deal for a couple of years, as you might recall. that was a sweetheart deal between an aircraft manufacturer, DOD, and people ended up in jail. But I would fight for a line item veto, and I would certainly veto every earmarked pork barrel bill. Senator Obama has asked for Oh, nearly $1 billion in pork barrel earmarked projects, including $3 million for an overhead projector in a planetarium in his hometown. That's not the way we cut. We'll Time's cut out up. all the pork. Time's up. Well, uh, look, I, I think that we do have a disagreement about uh, across-the-board spending freeze. It, it sounds good. It's proposed periodically. It doesn't happen. And, in fact, an across-the-board spending freeze uh, is a hatchet, uh, and we do need a scalpel because there's some programs that don't work at all. There's some programs that are underfunded. Uh, and I want to make sure that we are focused on those programs that work. Now, Senator McCain talks a lot about earmarks. That's one of the centerpieces of his campaign. Uh, earmarks account for uh, one half of one percent of the total federal budget. There's no doubt that the system needs reform, and there are a lot of uh, screwy things that we end up spending money on, and they need to be eliminated. But it's not going to solve the problem. Now, the last thing I think we have to focus on is a little bit of history, just so that we understand what we're doing going forward. Uh, when President Bush came into office, we had a budget surplus, and the national debt was a little over $5 trillion. It has doubled over the last eight years, and we are now looking at a deficit of well over half a trillion dollars. So. One of the things that I think we have to recognize is pursuing the same kinds of policies that we pursued over the last eight years is not going to bring down the deficit. Dude. And frankly, Senator McCain voted for four out of five of President Bush's budgets. We've got to take this in a new direction. That's what I propose as president. Do, do either of you think you can balance the budget in four years? You have said uh, previously you thought you could, Senator McCain. Sure, I do. You can let still me tell do you, that? Yeah. Senator Obama, I am not President Bush. If you wanted to run against Preston Bush, you should have run four years ago. I'm going to give a new direction to this economy in this country. Senator Obama talks about voting for budgets. He voted twice for a budget resolution that increases the taxes on individuals making $42,000 a year. Of course we can take a hatchet and a scalpel to this budget. It's completely out of control. The mayor of New York, Mayor Bloomberg, just imposed a across-the-board spending freeze on New York City. They're doing it all over America because they have to, because they have to balance their budgets. 
I will balance our budgets, and I will get them, and, and I will years. reduce this. I can, we can do it with this kind of job creation of energy independence. Now, look, Americans are hurting tonight, and they're angry, and I understand that, and they want a new direction. I can bring them in, the, in that direction by eliminating spending. Senator Obama talks about the budgets I voted for. He voted for the last two budgets that had $24 billion more in spending than the, than the budget that the Bush administration proposed. He voted for the energy bill that was full of goodies for the oil companies that I opposed. So the fact is, let's look at our records, Senator Obama. Let's look at as graded by the National Taxpayers Union and the Citizens Against Government Waste and the other watchdog organizations. I have fought against spending. I have fought against special interests. I have fought for reform. You have to tell me one time when you have stood up with the leaders of your party on one single major issue. Well, right. uh, the, uh, there's a lot of stuff that was put out there, so let me uh, try to address it. First of all, in terms of standing up to uh, the leaders of my party, the first major bill that I voted on in the Senate uh, was in support of tort reform, which wasn't very popular with trial lawyers, a major constituency in the Democratic Party. Uh, I An support, overwhelming vote. I support charter schools. and pay for performance for teachers. Doesn't make me popular with the teachers union. I support clean coal technology. Doesn't make me popular with environmentalists. So uh, I've got a history of reaching across the aisle. Now, uh, with respect to a couple of things Senator McCain said, the notion that uh, I voted for a tax increase for people making $42,000 a year has been disputed by everybody who's looked at this claim that Senator McCain keeps on making. Even Fox News disputes it. Uh, and, and, and that doesn't happen very often uh, when it comes to accusations about me. Uh, so so the, the, the fact of the matter is, is that uh, if I occasionally mistaken your policies for George Bush's policies, it's because on the core economic issues that matter to the American people, on tax policy, on energy policy, on spending priorities, uh, you have been a vigorous supporter of President Bush. Now, you've shown independence, commendable independence, on some key issues like torture, for example. And, and I give you enormous credit for that. But when it comes to economic policies, uh, essentially what you are proposing is eight more years of the same thing. And it hasn't worked. And I think the American people understand it hasn't worked. We need to move in a new direction. All right. Let me, let me just say that. Okay, about 30 okay, seconds. But it's, it's very clear that I have disagreed with the Bush administration. I have disagreed with leaders of my own party. I got the scars to prove it. Whether it be bringing climate change to the floor of the Senate for the first time, whether it be of opposition to spending and earmarks, whether it be the issue of torture, whether it be the conduct of the war in Iraq, which I vigorously opposed, uh, whether it be on fighting the pharmaceutical companies, on Medicare pres uh, prescription drugs, importation, whether it be fighting for an HMO patient's bill of rights, whether it be uh, the establishment of the 9-11 Commission. I have a long record of reform and fighting through on the floor of the United States Senate. All right. Senator Obama, your, your, your argument for standing up to the leaders of your party isn't very convincing. All right. We're going to move to a, uh, another question. Uh, and the topic is leadership in this campaign. Both of you pledged to take the high road in this campaign. Yet, it has turned very nasty. Senator Obama, your campaign has used words like erratic, out of touch, lie, angry, losing his bearings to describe Senator McCain. Senator McCain, your commercials have included words like disrespectful, dangerous, dishonorable. He lied. Your running mate said he palled around with terrorists. Are each of you tonight willing to sit at this table and say to each other's face what your campaigns and the people uh, in your campaigns have said about each other? And the, Senator McCain, you're first. Well, it's, this has been a tough campaign. It's been a very tough campaign. And I know from my experience in many campaigns that if Senator Obama had asked my, responded to my urgent request to sit down and do town hall meetings and come before the American people, we could have done at least 10 of them by now. When S Senator Obama was first asked, he said, any place, any time. The way Barry Goldwater and Jack Kennedy agreed to do before the intervention of the tragedy at Dallas. So I think the tone of this campaign could have been very different. 